Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about uh, different public speaking styles. So I've uh, published several videos about debating. And uh, public speaking obviously includes debating, but there's a more general oratory. Um, often it's not in a debate. So speaking to at least several people is a fairly formal setting. Could be thousands of people, could be on television. Um, I'd like to look at uh, some of the most famous people in the world their uh, diverse public speaking styles. So I'll, I'll start with um, a public figure who's perhaps the most famous person in the world simply because she's been on the global scene for so long, for over seven decades. That is the Queen of the United Kingdom. So um, Her Majesty's got quite a distinctive style. We'll assess what's good with it, what's bad with it. I'll try and do, it, do an uh, imitation of it, not of her as such, but the style. Um, because the Queen speaks quite slowly, very deliberately. She doesn't look up a lot. She is reading her script. She does not imbue her speech with much emotion, but it's very steady. She never ever makes a mistake. She never has to go back and repeat herself. The trouble is that it is almost a monotone and it is not very exciting to listen to. The scripts are not written by the woman herself, so her heart is not in them. Um, however, as I say, the delivery is flawless both in enunciation and the steadiness with which the speech is delivered. Furthermore, she never speaks for over six minutes. Uh, she doesn't try to be very animated. She never had to. People listen to her because she is the queen and not because she delivers things in a particularly lively manner. And that is the way Her Majesty the Queen speaks. So there you've got an idea, the pros and the cons of it. Um, so I suppose it's meant to have decorum to some extent that expresses her personality. She seems to have a somewhat bland housewife uh, character. And as Blair observed, she's actually timid. But I suppose because people have been looking at her all her life, she has very little privacy. So you can see how one would feel quite inhibited like that. She became public property. Everything she did and said was analyzed. So she didn't try to be showy, didn't have to get attention. And uh, she doesn't boom it out or anything like that. All right, well, let's move on to Barack Obama. And remember, if you go way back to about 2004, there was a speech at the um, a Democratic uh, um, Conference, is that what they call it? I can't remember. Convention, that's the word, um, where um, he set the country ablaze and that really made, made his name. Up until then, he was virtually unknown. So um, Barack Obama. The thing about Barack Obama is that he leaves very regular pauses every few words, allow the audience to observe, to absorb what you're saying, and occasionally look into one corner, and then the other, and then keep going. So in a way it's quite steady, it's very slow, and it enables the audience to digest what he has just said, something like that. So there'll be some uh, sweeping arm gestures occasionally, so to show how self-assured he is, somewhat authoritative, but again, very steady in its way, more animated than the Queen, and certainly more varied, something like that. So what's good and bad about Obama's speech? Well, the speed changes a little bit, and uh, he's got uh, the hand uh, gestures to catch your attention, to reinforce what he's saying. Um, and uh, comes across as dominant in that way. Queen didn't need to signal that. Some people consider this to be conceited, his hand gestures. Um, he almost never mispronounces things or makes a grammatical mistake. So uh, it's quite statesmanlike, quite effective. And again, I suppose that expresses his personality. Although he's highly intellectual, a professor of constitutional law, he doesn't try and baffle people with uh, abstruse terminology. So um, again, a highly effective public speaker. He didn't become president for nothing. He had a lot of racial prejudice to overcome. Uh, so he maintains his dignity. I think in many ways he's a good public speaker. Not the most memorable, not incredibly exciting. Certainly fairly engaging. Better than the Queen, certainly. The Queen is probably one of the blandest uh, orators who's uh, renowned. And she's just known for her position. Not really because her speech is, is uh, particularly uh, illuminating. All right, so we'll go on to President Putin, although it's a different language, not trying to do an impression of him, but his style. Again, it's very, very steady, a little bit like the Queen in that way, 
usually very little emotion, but occasionally there is. So it's all about self-discipline, self-control, and things like that. Doesn't move very much when he's doing it. Hardly any hand gestures, uh, because he's got to be someone who's rock steady, who people can look up to. Not a great deal of emotion in his voice, almost a monotone, but certainly poise, self-assured, something like that. I suppose that's the image he projects, and indeed that's his persona. Well, Donald Trump couldn't read really more different, different. Donald Trump's wild, although he does move around quite a lot. Hands up, sometimes both up. Sorry, I've got to hold the selfie stick. I must invest in one of these things that clamps onto the laptop. Um, and looking around this way, and looking around that way, and just as like that, and shouting. So it's all up and down, and repeating himself quite a lot, and gurning his face up, stuff like that. You might have noticed that he doesn't close his mouth after he finishes speaking. And it's always a no, something like that. So cautionary, stay there, stay there, watch out, it's quite dangerous. And this one, and I'm telling you, it's something precise, and I'm jabbing you. So he's haranguing uh, his listeners. Certainly not apposite for a debate, um, but it's uh, memorable. Um, it's almost inimitable. So he's got his own uh, unique uh, ranting, shrieking style. These ravings uh, wouldn't do it for me. It certainly fires up... Uh, his, uh, his uh, loyal supporters. Um, so it's anti-antalytical, his style. Um, it, whatever else you say about him, you couldn't call him bland, right? So it's a very lively style, and there are lots of thrashing movements, hands up, moving down like that to show just um, uh, how he's in master of the situation, things like that. So um, certainly not articulate, repeating himself. There's a word salad, mingling words together, starts off in one direction, seems to go in another direction. One sentence doesn't really connect to another, full of non sequiturs, things like that. There'll be buzzwords, he'll be sloganizing about her complex points. Certainly can't accuse him of being too intellectual. Obama was thought to be too cerebral, to be too considered in his approach to things. And so um, Trump could scarcely be more different. Um, so uh, certainly uh, mobilizes uh, his audience. So very different, and he's the one with the least self-control. Is he hamming it up? I'm not sure when he gets into himself into a frothing rage. I suppose, I think that's him just letting go, and his volcanic personality comes through. So these are different speaking styles. Probably the most appropriate one for a debate is Obama, because you're, um, he's, he was a lawyer, he's a debater in a sense, he's been in presidential debates, Trump's been in a debate of sorts. Um, and um, Obama's a little bit too slow for a debate because you've got a limited period of time and you need to pack in uh, a lot of uh, a lot of rather um, complex material into a um, finite uh, space of time. Um, but he's um, not dull and he almost never comes out with a malapropism, whereas Trump comes out with plenty. Um, so I would go for Obama style if you could speed it up somehow make it a little bit more animated. I suppose Obama also had to think of the uh, dignity of his office, and that's why he had to deliver it in a um, more restrained manner. So those are some public speaking styles of some of the most famous people in the world, and you, you've got to think which you would go for. Think of your personality, and it'd be, it'd be an extension of that. If you can do funny, do funny. If you're irate about things, then fury could be opposite. Bear in mind some people find that off-putting, even if they're angry about the thing that you're angry about. If you, if you can articulate what the crowd is, is, is thinking, then you're on to a winner. Because sometimes I've done this, and I've just come out with a phrase which encapsulated how most people are feeling, and uh, the reaction was very positive, and I was stunned. I thought, my goodness, that was, that was incredibly easy. I'm a natural. It's just so easy to put it into a few words what the mainstream opinion is, and then it's guaranteed a cheer. Should perhaps have thought about Arthur Scargill, whose voice would be rising to crescendo, and then the audience would simply be impelled to applaud, something like that. And he would show them with the hand gestures as well as his tone of voice. Um, all right, that's enough about different public speaking styles.